your father gets down. I'm hungry. Oh, my. My gray jumper with a white blouse. What are you wearing? Phyllis, get off that phone and get dressed at 7.30. All right, Mom. Goodbye, Dorothy. See you at school. Bill. 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 Yeah. Oh, hello, Amy. Oh, hello, Bill. Come on. Up. Right away. Right away. I'm terribly sorry to have to disturb you like this, but you do have a job, you know. Oh, gee, I wish you'd waited two more minutes. Why? I was just about to make a choice. Choice about what? I was having a dream. About me? Well, you were kind of a part of it. It was before we were married, and I had to make up my mind. I could go to the North Pole with Admiral Byrd, or I could marry you. What did you decide? Why didn't you woke me up? You mean you had some doubts? Oh, just a dream. Amy. Hmm. How long have we been married? We're having an anniversary in two weeks, and you were there for the wedding. Figure it out for yourself. Amy, are you happy? At 7.30 in the morning, what kind of a question is that? I don't know, I don't know. I was just thinking about us. You know, this is it, Amy. The pattern's all set, you and me and the kids. This is it. I'm never going to the North Pole with Admiral Byrd. You're Byrd went to the South Pole. Well, this time he was going to the North Pole. I don't know if he had some kind of a defroster or something. Anyway, what difference does it make? I'm never going to go there. I'll just go on working for the Woodruff Department store. You go on raising the kids, and one day we'll be old, and nothing will have happened. Is that what you think about us? Oh, no, no, dear, I... I love you, I love the kids, but, but you I, I want to go to, go to the, the North, North Pole. Pole. Yeah, well, why not? Because for one thing, you're not dressed properly. You'd freeze to death. And for another, breakfast will be ready in ten minutes. Uh. Mom, is it all right for Dorothy and me to collect specimens after school today? You know perfectly well today is Cynthia Woodruff's birthday party. But I don't like Cynthia Woodruff. Why do I have to go? Because, Mr. W Phyllis, I wish you'd stop taking this telephone upstairs. Because Mr. Woodruff expects the children of all of his executives to come to his daughter's birthday party. It's slavery, that's what it is. Hmm? But why do I have to go to that birthday party? For the same reason I can't go to the North Pole. Bye, kids. Bye, Pop. Good night. Hi, dear. Bye. Oh, Bill, hmm? would you mind bringing home a case of club soda tonight? Oh, it's Wednesday. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. The gang's coming over to play canasta, yeah. Every Wednesday, week in and week out, we play canasta. Amy, hey, listen. Let, let's, let's be daring. Next week, let's play on Thursday. No, no it'd be too much of a shock to everybody. dresser down here. His nibs is upstairs this morning. Gave him an awful sour look. He should. He bought them. He's forgotten that. Wanted to know why they're not moving. So you're moving them down here. That's huh? it. Oh, very good. Come on, Joe. Mr. Lawrence. Yeah. Mr. Woodruff wants to see you in his office. Okay, thanks, Joe. Good morning, Mary. Balcony, huh? Good morning, Freddy. Alice. Hello, Bill. It's okay. Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Burns are here. Send them right in. Proceed at your own risk. Mm, one of those mornings. One of those mornings, Monday to Saturday. Good morning, Mr. Woodruff. Morning. Sit down, both of you. Gentlemen, I just looked down at the main floor. I counted 24 sales girls and eight customers. Now, you're supposed to be two bright, ambitious young men. What are we going to do about it? 
Well, Bill? Uh, I'm just thinking, sir. Hmm. Yes, Fred? Well, Mr. Woodruff, I think we all have to get together, put our shoulders to the wheel, and push. Push what? Where? Or even whom? Well, what I meant is that if we... I know what you meant. I don't want slogans. I want ideas I can ring up in the cash register. I can remember back in 1943 when we had 24 sales girls and 200 customers. Oh, well, but there was a war going on in 1943. Now, there's a man who knows history. I'm not asking for 1943 to come back. All I want is to be able to look down on that floor and see that we don't outnumber the customers. Well, Mr. Woodruff, I don't think this is kind of a problem we can solve just off the cuff like this. All right. We'll have a conference next Wednesday. Maybe you'll be able to contribute something by then. Right. Now, just a minute. I'm not through. I'm going to Europe next month. Somehow, Mrs. Woodruff has persuaded me that what I need is a trip to Europe. She's also of the opinion that either of you is capable of running this store in my absence. I only hope she's right. I need to come back from Europe and find a vacant lot where the store is. <laughs> Naturally, there'll be an increase in salary and a title, vice president, that's all, gentlemen. Oh, just one thing more. Those polka dot dresses in the 1995 department, you bought 50 of them last month. There are only 49 left. I'd like to sell them before the dots fade. Yes, sir, I know about that peach spoon. I don't care who sells them, just sell them. That's all. Well, Bill, may the best man win. Oh, I wish I'd said that. Well, if you're going to be the wife of the vice president of the Woodruff Department store, you just have to dress differently. When did this happen? It hasn't happened. Maybe in the next three weeks. Between me and Fred Burns. Fred Burns? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Telephone. Oh, my God. Hello? Hello. New York is calling Mr. William J. Lawrence. Okay. Oh, just a moment, Mr. Lawrence. I have Mr. Lawrence for you now. Hello, is this Mr. William J. Lawrence of 5960 Linden Avenue, Glenville, Indiana? This is the Federal Broadcasting System, Mr. Lawrence. Will you be at home tonight between 9 and 10 o'clock to listen to Name the Mystery Husband on the Federal Broadcasting System? Name the Mystery Husband. Well, I, I can be home. Well, what's this all about? Your telephone number has been selected as one of those to be called during the program tonight. You'll have a chance at the $24,000 jackpot. $24,000. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll be home. Yeah, we're, we're having some friends in. Good. We have to be sure so the program can go right along without any don't answers or busies. Now, please don't use your phone between 9 and 10 so the line will be open for us when we call. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Goodbye. Bill, take those glasses in the living room, will you? Oh, wait, you can take these, too. It'll only be a second. Uh, Who was that on the phone? That was the federal broadcasting system, if you please. And they want me to be home between 9 and 10 so I can name the mystery husband and win the $24,000 jackpot. Feeling pretty good, aren't you? Get the ice out for me, will you, dear? Who was it? Bill. Mabel Spooner pretended she's a radio station. Honestly, that mm -hmm. Mabel. Pete probably put her up to it. Well, I went along with the gag. I told her I'd be home. Are you sure it was Mabel Spooner? Oh, certainly. What'd you say the name of the program was? Name the mystery husband. You win the trillion dollar jackpot. No, the $24,000 jackpot. What, Tommy? I don't know what you win, Mom, but it's something fierce. 
Can I stay up and listen to it? Are you sure that wasn't the federal broadcasting system that called you? I don't know. Gee, did they call us? Well, somebody called us, son. We do you know the answer? No, no, I don't. Now, Tommy, don't get excited. It's just some of our friends trying to play a joke on you, Father. That's right, Tommy. It's just a gag. Now, go on up and take your bath. Gee whiz, what kind of a thing is that to joke about? You sure? I'm positive. Are you? Well, I don't know, Amy. Why, why would the broadcasting company call me? Well, they just take a number out of the book. Oh, no, the odds are one in ten million. Why did they call me just as soon as I came home? Why didn't they call me this afternoon? Now, I must have been Mabel Spooner. She knew I was at the store. I think you ought to listen, Dad. Gee, it's the chance of a lifetime. Uh, Tommy, I told you it was just a gag. Now, go on upstairs. Yes, go, go on. on. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, as soon as I hear Mabel Spooner's voice, I'll know. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Let's see, come on. Hello, Bill. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, right. Hi, Where's Amy? Oh, she's upstairs. Get on a minute. Here, Mabel, let me take your coat. How are you? Hello, Hello everybody. Hello, Amy. Hi, Hi. Hi. I'm going right straight home. Say that again. I'm going right straight home. What's the matter? Matter? Take a look. We're wearing the same dress. Oh, Don't no. Don't blame me. He made me buy it. Well, Bill. I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so? Of course you made me buy. He made he made every department head buy one, well, didn't he? Right. No, Pete, this is something else. Well, whatever it is, this is one creation he's returning tomorrow morning. Oh, hold on, Mabel. Now, I want you to repeat after me. This is the federal broadcasting system. I most certainly will not. No, then what's one. the idea? We come on the wrong night? No. What's the matter, Bill? Bill? Oh, you, you better tell him, Bill. I will not tell You're going to feel like an awful dope but if I, it isn't a gag. I, all right, all right. Well, I got a call a little while ago, and they're going to call me on this Name the Mystery Husband broadcast. When I, and if I guess the right thing, why I win the $24,000 jackpot. <sighs> well, all right, now, come on, now, tell the truth. Now, did you make that call? Me? Yeah, you, why oh. would I do a thing like that? $24,000, Bill. You'll never have to work another day as long as you live. All right, now, come on. You've all had your fun. Now, which one of you gals called me? Come on. Gangway, gangway. Oh, Pete, where are you going? I'm going, going to call the McDougals and the Browns and tell them to get right over here. This is the biggest thing that's hit Glendale since the tornado. What makes you think it was a gang, Bill? Hey, everybody drink up now. Oh, here, Bill. 23,999. Hey, uh, isn't anybody going to play canasta? Oh, In a little while, Herman. Bill, yeah? would you come out here? I want to talk to you. I'll fix that. We'll be right back. Hurry back, Bill. Hurry back. That's enough of that. You have to keep your wits about you. All right. <laughs> Bill, we have to do something about this. Do something about what? Try to find out who the mystery husband is. Oh, now, Amy, if we win, we win. If we lose, what's the difference? Everybody's having a lot of fun. Fun? Bill Lawrence, I don't get you at all. You work a full year at Woodruff's for $7,500, and here you have a chance to win $24,000, and you don't even lift your finger to do anything well, about it. What do you want me to do? Well, Mabel says that Walter Winchell's always giving tips on the jackpot programs. Maybe, maybe somebody knows about who the mystery husband is. Who? Well, maybe somebody in radio, maybe. Oh, I, I don't know anybody in radio. Don't we know somebody who might know somebody? Well, look, it's too late anyway, Amy. Look, it's a quarter after eight now. The program goes on in 45 minutes. Harry Summers. What about him? Newspaper men know everybody. Who oh, do you know where he is? It's a regular poker night. I know exactly where he is. Yeah, you know, it does make sense, Bill. After all, $24,000. Suppose Woodruff doesn't make you vice president. Who cares? That's right. I, I keep calling the wrong numbers. Well, uh... Harry? Yes, Bill, this is Harry. Yeah. Yeah. You don't say. Well, what do you know? My, my, my. In this part, Harry? No, deal me out. I don't know. I could help you, Bill. I make it a point not to listen to giveaway programs. Who do I know now? Walla Winchell. <laughs> We're in the same business, but I don't know him. Hold on. Say, any of you fellas ever listen to the Mystery Husband broadcast? No, not me. No. Crazy no. tune. No, nope. nobody here ever heard of it. I'd like to help you, Bill, but... Hey, wait a minute. I know just a guy, a songwriter. Lives in New York. It's a long shot, but he might know. Tell him to call him. Yeah, call him, will you, Harry? I'll pay for it. Yeah, it's worth a long-distance call. You know, this is $24,000. Okay, call you right back. Deal me out a couple of hands, will you? Yeah. Okay. Hello? Yeah, this is Al Stern. 
Oh, hello, Harry. How are you, Kitty? Good, good. What? Name the mystery husband. Oh, the radio program. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did hear something about that just the other day. Well, now, I don't know for sure, Harry. Look, you're going to check with a couple of other people on this, aren't you? Because I wouldn't want this fellow to blame me if I was wrong. All right, then I'll tell you what I know. And I really don't know anything. It's just what I hear around. Uh, they're saying that it's either Harry James or Charles MacArthur. Charlie McCarthy? How could he be married? No, not Charlie McCarthy. Charles MacArthur, the writer who's married to Helen Hayes. Harry James or General MacArthur? Oh, Charles MacArthur. Who's he? Oh, Helen Hayes. Oh, I get it. Well, that's the best information I can get, Bill. But look, pal, don't blame me if it isn't either one of them. Might even be some third guy we never heard of. Yeah, I know, Harry, and, and thanks a lot, Harry. So long. Well, it's either Harry James or Charles MacArthur or somebody else. Why, well, that's hell. Hey, I better turn on the radio. It's five minutes to nine. The radio is on. Yeah. Well, I'll turn it on the car. What for? Well, so we can hear it over all this noise and get it from both sides. Well, good. I'll open the dining room window. 9 p.m. America, and time for... Name the mystery husband. Brought to you through the courtesy of Rex, the king of soaps. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And Mary's clothes are just as bright. She uses Rex, you know. Oodles of bubbles and bushels of suds with Rex, Rex, Rex. Yes, friends, Rex is king in my house. Because he makes things so clean, I feel like a queen. And now we bring you our master of ceremonies, the man who would rather give things away than be president. Larry Haynes! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're back together again. Ten weeks, and still no one has been able to guess the identity of the mystery husband. The jackpot has now reached the colossal sum of $24,000 in prizes. All you have to do is name the mystery husband. So stay close to your telephone. We may call any one of you any minute. Now, listen closely. There's a clue in every line. Here is the mystery husband himself. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Farewell, my love, I'm off anew. You can't see me, but I'll see you. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. What do you think? I think I need a drink. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you. And now for the complete list of the jackpot prizes. An international sterling silver coffee service. A $2,000 Moray diamond ring. A Sherwin-Williams paint and varnish supply for your entire house, inside and out. Venetian blinds and window styling throughout by Kirsch Company. A magnificent suite of Vixel bedroom furniture. A Westinghouse refrigerator. A Westinghouse electric range. A Amy, you've got most of those things. A I'll throw them out. Cleaner. A Westinghouse laundromat. A general electric sink, combining garbage disposal unit and automatic dishwasher. Bill, you can throw Amy out. A Kelvinator <laughs> home freezer, plus a three-year supply of Libby's frozen fruits and vegetables. A complete steer, dressed and delivered to your home by the premium meatpacking corporation of Kansas City. $2,000 worth of deciduous, pest-free, and budded fruit trees from the Arnold Nurseries. An airplane trip for two people to New York City by TWA, with all expenses paid for two weeks at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. A French maid for two weeks. Selected by the Knickerbocker Domestic Bureau. I wouldn't take the trip. I'd stay home with a French maid. <laughs> the new author Godfrey Baritone Ukulele by Vega. A Baldwin Baby Grand Piano. Twelve one hundred dollar Balta wristwatches. Your portrait painted in oils by the famous Greenwich Village artist Hilda Jones. Seven thousand five hundred cans of Campbell's Delicious Soup. A new Ford custom built station wagon. A Palomino pony from the night breeding farms of Lexington, Kentucky. Your house done over completely from cellar to attic by the world-famous Leslie of Harrington Interiors. An Evans Circular Outdoor Portable Swimming Pool. Six $100 hats styled and created by the famous Jacques of Fifth Avenue. A Mandeville five-in-one combination radio, television, phonograph, wire recorder, and bar, complete with two dozen drinking glasses. A prairie schooner trailer completely equipped to live in or for traveling. And all these fabulous prizes are yours if you name the mystery husband. Operator, place that first call. Oh, Bill, you promised you wouldn't drink too much. 
Are you listening, America? Hello. Hello. To whom am I speaking, operator? This is Grace Simpson of 2489 Grant Avenue, Hoboken, New Jersey. It's a nice to anyone. I've got some awful good hands here. Hello, Mrs. Simpson. Do you know who this is? Yes, that's right, your old friend Larry Haynes. There's $24,000 in prizes waiting for you. But first, Mrs. Simpson, can you give me the answer to this riddle? Little Nanny Yeti coat in a white petticoat and a red nose. The longer she stands, the shorter she grows. Well, Mrs. Simpson, who or what is Little Nan Eddicoat? Eddicoat, Eddicoat. It's a candle, Daddy, a candle. What's that, Mrs. Simpson? Shh, shh. A candle? That is absolutely right, Mrs. Simpson, out there in Hoboken, New Jersey. Don't go to bed, Tommy. Just stay right where you are. Don't leave me, son. Now, Mrs. Simpson, you have won the chance to guess the name of the mystery husband. Listen to him closely. Here he is. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Farewell, my love, I'm off anew. You can't see me, but I'll see you. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. All right, Mrs. Simpson, can you guess? What's that? What? Would you mind repeating that, please? Oh, I'm awfully sorry, oh. that is not correct. <laughs> But we are going to send you a full year's supply of Rex, the king of soaps, and six pedigreed boxer puppies. <laughs> Operator, the next call, please. Play, boys. What do you suppose she said? I don't know. Stand by, America. Your phone may ring any minute. It's either Harry James or Douglas MacArthur. What? What are you talking about, Bill? This is Eddie Dexter. We wondered if you and Amy could come over for some bridge. Bridge? Are you crazy? Now hang up the phone. I can't talk to you now. What, what's the matter with you? Who was it? Eddie Dexter. He wants us to play bridge. Bridge? Oh, Eddie's the only one in town who doesn't know what's going on. What a time to call a guy. How stupid can you Bridge? Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Farewell, my love. I'm off anew. You can't see me, but I'll see you. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Well, Mr. Jensen, who is the mystery husband? Oh, you don't know? Oh. You want to guess? <laughs> oh, no, it's not me. I'm not married. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Jensen, but we are going to send you a full year's supply of Rex, the king of soaps and a free gift subscription to a complete course of dancing lessons from Bellows and Yolanda. Happy Rambo, Mr. Jensen. Play, boys. Excuse me, Daddy. Hey! Hey, give me that telephone. What do you, what do you think you're doing? Well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Everybody hates me. Yeah, Fifteen minutes gone already. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Oh. Sylvester. That is not correct. But we are going to send you a full year's supply of Rex, the king of soaps, and a genuine Bronson stainless steel lifetime guaranteed automatic egg beater. Play, boys. Uh, only eight minutes left. Amy. Hey, Bill, the telephone. Bill, the telephone. Answer it. Answer the phone. 
with it. Well, I don't know. Find out, Bill. Oh. oh. Yes, this is William Warren. What? Yes, I am listening. Yeah. I'll hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Get him out. Come on. It's all right, Bill. Here, Peter, in the chair. No, no, keep under speaking. Who am I speaking? Yes. Mr. William J. Lawrence of 5960 Linden Avenue, Glenville, Indiana. Hello there, Mr. Lawrence. Hello there. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, this is Larry Haynes of the Name the Mystery Husband program. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, that's splendid, and I hope you're going to be feeling even better in a few minutes, Mr. Lawrence. We have a little riddle for you, and if you answer it correctly, you will win a chance to guess the identity of the mystery husband and win the $24,000 jackpot. Are you ready, Mr. Lawrence? Mm, guess so. Mr. Lawrence is ready. All right, girls. Slow and steady wins the race. Not the one who sets the pace. One went fast, the other went slow, but the slow one won, as we all know. All right, Mr. Lawrence, out there in Glenville, Indiana. Can you tell me who were the two contestants in this famous trial of speed? Race, race. Wins a race. Wins a race. It, it, it's middle ground and your host. No, no, Daddy. It's the tortoise and the hare. That's right, Bill. The tortoise and the hare. Of course. The tortoise and the hare. What's that? The tortoise and the hare? That is absolutely correct, Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> now, if you'll be just as smart on this next question, the $24,000 jackpot is yours. Listen carefully, Mr. Lawrence. Here is the mystery husband himself. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Farewell, my love, I'm off anew. You can't see me, but I'll see you. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue. Mr. Lawrence, can you tell us who the mystery husband is? I do. You have a neck open. Yeah. Mr. Lawrence, are you there? Mr. Lawrence appears to have faded. I think it's Harry James. Will you repeat that, Mr. Lawrence? Harry James. What's that? What? Harry James? That is absolutely correct, Mr. Lawrence. I'll pay in Indiana. You have won the $24,000 jackpot. Congratulations, Mr. Glenville, out there in Lawrence, Indiana. You were absolutely right. Are you happy? I'll bet you are. Now, Mr. Lawrence, let me tell the radio audience the solution to the riddle. Pins in a haystack, little girl blue, refers to Miss Betty Grable. She's a famous pinup girl, and since Harry James is little boy blue, come blow your horn, that makes her little girl blue. Simple when you know the answer, isn't it? And you can't see me, but I'll see you is the simplest clue of all. Miss Grable can't see Mr. James when he's on tour with his famous band, but he can always see her by going to the movies. And there we have the solution to the riddle that has been baffling radio audiences for 10 weeks all over America. Clear the tracks to Glenville, Indiana. The $24,000 in prizes are on their way. Congratulations, Mr. Lawrence. Good morning. Hi, Mike. I heard it, too. That was something. 24,000 bucks. Boy, what I could do with that. Well, it isn't really $24,000. That's just a radio figure, you know. Yeah, but When still. do the prizes start coming? Any day now, Hope. Gee, what a lucky guy. You ain't kidding. Congratulations, Mr. Lawrence. You were sitting there listening to the radio and suddenly they called your name. I just couldn't believe it. We sure weren't pulling for you. The national was prize and it's wonderful. Whatever made you think it was Harry James? Bill, congratulations. I never expected to see you here today. Boy, if I'd won $24,000. It isn't really $24,000, Fred. That's just a radio figure, you know. Yes, I know, but still I'd tell Mr. A.J. Woodruff he could have his job. Oh, good morning, Mr. Woodruff. Oh, that's a fine job. Oh, I'm sorry, Fred. I just couldn't resist it. But believe me, if there was anything I wanted to do this morning it was just to stay in bed and sleep and sleep. What made you decide to come in? Oh, oh yeah. Good morning, Mr. Woodruff. <laughs> Congratulations. You made quite a haul. $24,000. Of course, it isn't really $24,000. It's just, just a, a radio, radio figure. figure. Yes, I heard. <laughs> Is this a convention? Mm -hmm. Few people have anything better to do. Don't let me detain you. Oh, girl, girl, come on. Congratulations, please. Now, hurry. 
Harry Summers gave you quite a spread this morning. Yeah, it sure pushed Russia right off the front page, didn't it? <laughs> Uh, this trip to New York, when were you planning to take it? Oh, we hadn't thought anything about it. Mm. You may recall I'm planning to go to Europe. I don't see how we can both be away at the same time, do you? Unless, of course, winning $24,000 has changed your plan. Oh, no, no, no. Amy and I have talked this thing all over. We're not going to let this change a thing. Well, you're not thinking of retiring. Oh, no. <laughs> Woodruff's is very glad to hear that. Uh... <laughs> You might also call Mr. Summers and tell him that if he plans writing any more stories about you, it would be nice if he mentioned where you work. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, well. yeah Arnie? Well, the loot started to come, Bill. Yeah, Here, you'll have time for it. All right. From the Moray Jewelry Company. Must be the diamond ring. Mind if I hang around and get a look at it? Not at all, Ernie. Hurry up, Bill. Gee, I thought somebody had yelled the $2,000 diamond ring. There'd be a big blast of trumpets, and you bring it in a velvet cushion or something. Ernie can blow the whistle, if that's what you want. Yeah. Here. <gasps> oh, Margaret, oh, that's beautiful. Put, put your... Thank you, Bill. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Here comes something else. Keep it. Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence? Yes? Good morning. I am Leslie of Harrington Interior. Oh, you're the decorator. How do you do? Won't you come in? Certainly. Is that one of the prizes? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Kids have to go to school. But, Dad, I'm interested in interior decorating. After school. But I... Divine? Absolutely divine. We won't be able to use a thing. It all has to go. Has to go? There's so much that I can do, Mr. Lawrence. You won't know this place when I get through with it. Yeah, well, just a second now, Mr. Lethbury. Uh, and this, I suppose, is the dining room. Mm -hmm. Dear me. But the possibilities are unlimited. We'll simply junk everything and start from scratch. Oh, I don't know about that. You know, there's some things around here I like. Victorian. That's it? Yes, definitely Victorian. Maybe not. Well, I have to go to work. Goodbye, Mr. Leslie. Just Leslie. Goodbye, old boy. Bye, dear. See you tonight. Bye. Well, any ideas? I'd like to make a suggestion. This isn't original with me. It's been tried out in a number of progressive department stores throughout the country and with great success. I think we should open a new department, a babysitting department. A baby? Yes. Now, this, this, idea, this idea that I have. I... Yes? Oh, he's very busy right now. Well... Who is it? Who is it? It's Mrs. Lawrence. She wants to speak to Mr. Lawrence. Oh, well, tell her I'll call her back later. Mrs. Lawrence, he... She says it's urgent. Go ahead, Bill. Talk oh, to no. her. Go ahead. Go ahead and take less time than what's going on right now. Yes, Amy. It has? Well, it... Well, why don't you just put it in the refrigerator? Oh. Well, I I'll think of something. Call you back. Yes, dear. I... Uh, yes, dear, I know it's a hot day. It's the jackpot. More stuff's arrived. They just delivered the meat. And Amy called you about that? That's right. Well, why didn't you just put it in the refrigerator? This is a quarter of a ton of beef. Yeah. Complete steer, fully dressed. Well, this is certainly no day for anybody to be fully dressed. <laughs> oh, uh, <yeah. laughs> All right, where were we, Miss Bowen? Oh, uh, Mr. Lawrence had just suggested opening a babysitting department. Mm. Now, mechanically speaking, it should work very simply. We'll just set aside a part of the children's shoe department, rope it off, put in some playground equipment, and with a... Well, answer it. Yes? Hmm? It's Amy, Bill. No, tell her I can't talk to her now. Oh, it's all right. We can wait. Some things are more important than some things. Yes, Amy. Oh, the deep freeze. Well, that solves all our problems. No, it doesn't, huh? No, of course you can't throw away three years' supply of frozen food. You know, I, I, Amy, I know it's a hot day. Just put it in the shade and I'll think of something. I'll call it. What? Oh. 
The doorbell just rang. She thinks something else came. Oh, she thinks something else came. <clears throat> yeah? Oh, for heaven's sake, I never thought of that. Yeah. I'll call you back. But what came now? The Palomino pony. Where are you going to keep it? I don't know. That's what Amy wanted to find out. Now, where were we? Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, by all means, go ahead. What's to prevent the women from parking their children here and going across the street to Osborne's to shop? Oh, no, 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 no. Allow me. Amy, you, you just can't keep call, calling. Oh, Tommy. Oh, fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about the pony. <laughs> the trailer just came, and Tommy says that Amy's going to put the pony in the trailer. Well, that's very ingenious. Bye, Tommy. Yeah. I was saying, what's to prevent the women from parking the children here with us and going across the street to Osborne's? No, Fred. Now, you see, when they park the kids here, we give them a ticket. So when they buy something, you have to get the ticket stamped, or they don't get the baby back. <laughs> I mean, it's just the same as parking a car in our parking space. If you don't get the ticket validated, you have to pay for the baby. I mean, the, you have to pay for the car. Pay for the car. You have to get the baby stamp. On the oh, bottom. On the, on the... Hello, Amy. Yes, what's the matter? I suppose the pony doesn't want to go into the trailer. That's what I thought. Yes, Amy. Bill will be right home. Conference dismissed. <laughs> Us to the rear, please. What do you mean? I live here. Oh, why, of course. How stupid of me. You may come in. Careful, don't get trampled on now. All right, gentlemen, as soon as you get this thing assembled, Watch bring it, it in here. We won't worry about the sofa. It's going out. Pardon me, fellow. Uh, uh, Amy, what's, it, what's that in your head? A Jacques Fifth Avenue hat. The only thing I knew where to put. Isn't the piano beautiful? Yeah. Oh, Phyllis said that Hilda Jones called. She's coming right out from the station to talk to you about your portrait. Portrait? No portrait. Now we settle. Oh, that, Bill, honey. it can only happen once in a lifetime. Enjoy it. No, oh, look, here's the bedroom furniture we want. Isn't oh. it attractive? Excuse us, please. Oh, that's all right, isn't mm -hmm. it? Where are they taking it? To the garage. Leslie won't have it in the house. Oh, Leslie won't. Oh, come on. I want to show you the swimming pool. The swimming pool? Mm hmm. Jump in, Bob! Hi, Bill. Made a yeah, we did, didn't we? Say, come on out, will you, Bill? I want to get some pictures of you and Amy. What, pictures of us? Of course, Bill. We're new. You know a flashlight like Joe here, don't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. How about over by the trailer? Sure. Oh, that's good. All right. Harry, hey, do me a favor, will you? In tomorrow's story, mention I work at Woodward. Oh, a plug, huh? Well, oh, sure, sure. Joe, get the pony. Right. Where do you want it? This is fine right here. Hey, wait a minute. Amy, try the other side. All right. No, no, no. The hat's going to cover your face. Oh, let me take it off. No, no, no. Leave it on. After all, it's part of the loot, ain't it? Yeah. Say, our readers might be interested in knowing what you're going to do about your income tax. What income tax? Well, the income tax and all this stuff you won. Oh, that's swell. Okay, here we are. Hold the rope, Amy, will you? Isn't he cute? For some reason, his name is Sylvia. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, would you mind getting up on the pony? Uh, what are you doing? Well, of course I'm not going to get up on the pony. Oh, all right. Harry, what are you talking about? Income tax and all these things. What kind of a crazy idea is that? I don't know. It seems to me every time I read about a guy winning a jackpot, he always has to pay a tax on it. Big smile now. All right, uh, ready. Big smile now. Hold it. That's a good one. Come on, Amy, come out on the house. I want to get a picture of you with all that fancy kitchen equipment. Here, Bill, hold Sylvia. How can you pay income tax on a refrigerator? What do you do, send them a tray of ice cubes? Yeah, they're die laughing. Very humorous, those internal revenue boys. <laughs> Bring it 
get right in. I, oh. Mr. Lawrence? Yes? I am Hilda Jones. You have won me, too. Well, that's all. Yes. Sure you have the right program? Uh, uh, address? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Rex Soap. It has sent me here to paint your portrait. Oh, uh, Hilda Jones. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh, the, the portrait. Oh, I, I, yes, I forgot. Hey, uh, oh, Amy, I, I like to present my wife, Mrs. Lawrence. This is Miss Jones. Mrs. Lawrence, how do you do, Miss Jones? Watch, folks. No. Why don't we go in here out of the way? Yes. We're sort of torn up. Here, won't you sit down? Thank you. Are you Hilda Jones? Well, my real name is Hilda Garjonet. In English, Hilda Jones. It is simple, yes? Oh, much, but Greenwich Village. I thought you'd look sort of artsy, craftsy, and you're so... Well, anyway, it's a shame you had to travel such a distance because that was the one thing Bill said he didn't want. Didn't you, Bill? Uh, how's that, dear? Your portrait painted, dear. Oh. Yeah. Of course, I wanted him to, but he's absolutely set against it. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, that is bad. What's the matter? Well, if you do not have your portrait painted, I will lose the commission. Oh, isn't that a shame? Yes, a shame. Well, I hate to do that, too, but I just feel silly posing and... But why, Mr. Lawrence? You will make a beautiful subject. You have such fine features and, and good bone structure. Uh-huh. Yes, and posing is nothing. You will enjoy it. At least uh, all of my subjects do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse us, folks. Can we have this count? Oh, oh yeah. yes, of course. Yeah, it's hard to talk around here. Yes, it is difficult. Maybe it is better if I call you tomorrow. Yeah, well, why don't you do that? Yes, do. I am staying at the Glenville Hotel. Oh, you can reach me at Woodruff's. That's a big department store in town. Oh, well, I will call you then. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Quite a charmer, isn't she? Hmm? Well, I didn't notice particularly. Oh, didn't you? And what happens when you do notice particularly? Does smoke shoot out of your ears? Oh, Amy. Don't owe Amy me. Before you go off to do all that posing, I wish you'd do something about getting that steer into the deep freeze. And you might plan to spend a couple of hours in there with it. Well, I wouldn't take it to heart, Mr. Lawrence. This sort of thing always happens when the stuff starts to arrive. Have you, uh... Found out about the income tax here? Was it true? <laughs> oh, yes, indeedy. You mean to tell me I have to pay income tax and all this stuff here? Oh, you poor, innocent lamb. <laughs> here you guys talk, you'd think Uncle Sam himself was sitting at the radio, writing down all they sorts of... They take a list, yes. It's on file in Washington. With your fingerprints. Why don't they announce that on the program? If they did, Mr. Lawrence, there'd be no program. The children are so excited, they'll never fall asleep. Oh, come on in, Amy. It's Mr. Ferguson. Mr. Ferguson, my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Lawrence? How do you do? Mr. Ferguson's a tax consultant. He's going to figure out just exactly what our taxes will be and the best way to meet it. The best way to meet a tax, Mr. Lawrence, is to pay it. I always like to have it understood at the outset that I do not assist in any income tax evasion. Well, I'm not trying to get away with anything. It's impossible to get away with anything, Mr. Lawrence. I'm not trying to. Good. Now, let's have no further misunderstanding on that score. Do you know how much it is? I don't know. Ah, here it is. The latest ruling from the Bureau of Internal Revenue states that loot shall be considered income and as such taxable at the fair market value. In other words, the retail price. Therefore, your jackpot winnings plus your year's salary, less all legitimate deductions, will bring your tax to not less than $7,000. $7,000? Oh, no. Where am I going to get $7,000? Well, that is a question, since I noticed from your figures that you have only $496 in the bank. Well, I, I'll just have to get busy and sell some of this stuff. It's the only way out. Why don't we just send the government the things we don't want? The government only wants money, Mrs. Lawrence. The radio program didn't send us money. Why should we send the government no, money? Uh, Amy. You Amy. know what I'd do on March the 15th? I'd send them the pony. That's what I'd do, the pony no, and the soup. There, you don't quite understand. Now, Mr. Ferguson, now, the retail price on, say, the refrigerator is $300. Suppose I can only sell it for $150. You still have to pay tax on $300. Oh, still 300. What? You're crazy. What are you? This is crazy. You mean to tell me that all that stuff out there is income? That's the ruling, Mr. Lawrence. Of course, you can always hire a lawyer and take your case to court. Hire a lawyer? I don't even know where I'm going to get the money to pay you. Oh, I am a legitimate deduction. Of course, I could be persuaded to take uh, that refrigerator in oh. lieu of a fee. Oh, you might. Huh? Well, at least then I wouldn't have to pay an income tax on it. Oh, you pay just the same. I what? Don't feel too bad, Mr. Lawrence. I would have to pay an income tax on it, too. 
Oh, so the government's going to collect twice on that refrigerator, huh? How about that? How about that, huh? You, you, does that sound honest to you? You know, I just might not pay this at all. In that case, they would attach your salary. Then I'll quit my job and live on soup. They would attach this house. Then I'll burn the house down. What, what? about that? Bill, it isn't Mr. Ferguson's fault. What? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Ferguson. I, I appreciate what you're doing. Well, that's quite all right. You should see Mr. Woodruff when I make out his tax return. <laughs> oh, my. Mm, uh, do you mind if I take a look at the refrigerator on my way out? Of course not, Mr. Ferguson. It's right through there in the kitchen. Thank you. $7,000. What are we going to do, Bill? Well, we're just going to have to start stalling the stuff, that's all. The butcher offered me 20 cents a pound for that meat. And he'll sell it right back to us for a dollar a pound. Yeah, I suppose so. There's all this furniture Leslie's throwing out. We could sell it. Yeah, well, everything except this chair. Now, don't let anybody touch my chair, huh? I won't, dear. It's kind of like an old friend. $7,000? What about the state tax? Oh, Harry? Hello, Bill. Hey, how about buying your wife a diamond ring? How much? $2,000. If I had $2,000, I wouldn't buy my wife a ring. I'd run away from her. How about a man's wristwatch? Lady's lapel watch. Boy's pocket watch. Hey, do you always greet people like this? These days I do. What do you got for lunch here? What, peanut butter? Yes, and you're not supposed to like it. I am. Why'd you get your own? I don't have time. I'm in 64 different businesses. You know, I almost sold the trailer, but Leslie's living in it, so Amy didn't want to... didn't want to move them. Here, would you... would you run that ad? What, are you selling everything? Everything? I'm selling anything. Your uh, portrait, too? Portrait? What do you mean? I hear you're being painted by a lady artist who was quite a date. The way I get the story, you're hanging around the hotel posing a lot more than seems absolutely necessary. Is that what they're saying? Oh, it's pure envy, Bill, but that's what they're saying. Who? Nobody in particular. In the bars, at the ladies' club meetings, in the locker rooms. Well, she's not painting me. She's painting Amy. Painting Amy? Sure, it's going to be a surprise for our wedding anniversary. She's painting from a photograph. I... I hang around a little bit to keep her straight on the coloring, you know, the hair and the eyes. And... Uh, uh, I like that. That's a nice story. You just run the ad, huh? Yeah. Excuse me, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Thanks for lunch. <laughs> no, I... You might like this one. It's a little more expensive, however. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think not. I, I just don't seem to find what I want, but thanks just the same. Not at all. Come in again. Uh, you didn't find the watch you like, sir? Huh? I say, you didn't find the watch you like? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, well, you just happen to have a brand new shipment. That might be just what you're looking for. You care to see them? Yeah, sure. Right this way. There we are. Uh, how's that? No, I just brought them down. Haven't had a chance to put them in stock yet. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, not bad. But I wanted a brown band. Brown band? Of course, I, I did have in mind a kind of a octagon shape, sort of. Octagon shape, brown band. But no, no, that's not it. Here we are, here we are. Octagon shaped brown band, also have it in white gold. No, no, no. This is fine, fine. Just what I've been looking for. How much is it? How's that? How much is it? Well, now these are hundred dollar watches. Eighty-nine fifty. Including tax. Includes sales tax, luxury tax, income tax. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yes, I'll, sir. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> you live around town here? Me? No. I come from down in Clear Springs. Oh, Clear Springs. I'm 89. 89. 89. A lot of people down in uh, 50. Clear Springs. Yeah, thank oh, you very much. Would you mind having it wrapped up as a present for me? Uh, a present? Uh, the girl doesn't seem to be here. Well, I'll wrap it myself. Say, mister, could you tell me where the Venetian blinds are? I'm sorry, we don't carry Venetian blinds. But the missus said there's a guy in the store here selling them real cheap. He won them on some radio program called... Uh... Name the mystery husband? That's it. You have the wrong store. He works across the street at Osborne's. Thanks, mister. Here you are, sir. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Uh -huh. I, uh... Goodbye, goodbye. Thank goodbye. you very much. Lawrence! 
Lawrence! Yes, Mr. Wardrop? Yes, sir? Let's get this straight. This is my store. I pay the rent. Only my merchandise is sold here. Yes, sir, but that man... Don't interrupt. When customers come in here looking for window shades, don't bring up the subject of Venetian blinds. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, Bill? Amy, I won't be able to get home for dinner tonight. I just got a tip on a fellow that might buy the 7,500 cans of soup. It runs a string of diners. But, Bill, I have such a beautiful roast in the oven. Honey, he's just going to be in town tonight, and, you know, we've got to... I know, I know, the tax. Oh, well, I'm not very hungry, so I'll wait for you, and we'll both eat later. What? I said I have to see Hilda. Posing again? Oh. Nothing, I didn't say anything. Nothing, Bill. I told you nothing. Just the next time you make these plans, I wish you'd give me a little advance warning so I won't be left high and dry. Leslie? Oh, I didn't know we were dressing for dinner. We're going out. Out? You and I. Just you and I, not Mr. Lawrence? Mr. Lawrence has gone to the North Pole. I beg your pardon. And since he has, I'm going to swim the channel. <laughs> yeah. What? Come along, Leslie. Well, you got the eyes right, but it seems to me Amy's hair is a little... little, uh... Yeah, right... And there, it should be darker, I think. Like so? Yeah, I don't know. When must this be finished? Oh, Wednesday's our anniversary. No, oh, oh, no, no more right in there. Uh, that's better. You couldn't come over for dinner Wednesday night, could you? Sure would like you to be there when I give this to Amy. Well, that is very nice. But when I get this finished, I think it is better I go home. Do you not think so? Well, I... I... Oh. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Only when I work too long, my neck, it gets... Uh... Oh, maybe a drink would help. Sure, sure. What'd you like? Whiskey and soda, I think. Bourbon is good. All right. Hello. Say, give me the... Oh, yeah, never mind. What is wrong? Well, a uh, bartender down here is a friend of mine. Oh, well, then we should have very good service. No, no, I... See, I found out today that there's a lot of gossip around about you and me. No. Mm, you know how it is. The people around here are sort of small town. And you are not? Well, I get around more, you know. I'm go to Chicago on buying trips and stuff like that. It sort of gives me a broader point of view. When I... Yes, yes, of course. Um, no, you, well, you, you ought to relax those muscles. Here, just sit over in the chair here. Mm -hmm. I'm a champ at this. Here, now, just, just relax. And your wife, does she too think that uh, you and I... Oh, would... well, she was kind of cold over the telephone this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Your wife is like the mother who told her little boy not to put beans in his nose. I don't know that story. Well, he never would have thought to put beans in his nose until she suggested it. So as soon as she is not looking, he put beans in his nose. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, do not stop, please. Well... Oh, I, I take this off. Yeah, uh... Why don't you stand up here? No, no, just turn around here. Yeah. I remember this from my football days. Now, just uh, relax. No, no, not quite that much. No. Just relax. Put, put your head right. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh! Uh-oh. Oh. I'm sorry. It is I'm nothing. Very it so is nothing. No, but um, I... Maybe it is better I put on something maybe, a little maybe, more. Maybe, maybe it is. Yes. Yes. I, I will only be a minute. Oh, Still posing, Bill? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but we're all through, almost. Oh, that's too bad.
Hmm? What's the matter? I don't think that duck is sitting very well. Oh, I'm sorry. The menu said Long Island duck. If that duck came from Long Island, it walked out of here. <laughs> I don't think it was the duck. I think it was all the dancing on top of the duck. Amy, will you fix me a bromo? Of course, you poor thing. I'll bring it out to the trailer. Thank you, Eva. Oh, Leslie, you should say the funniest thing. <laughs> and the Charleston, I'm so glad it keeps coming back. I just love it. Da, 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 da. Oh, Leslie, this has been the most enchanted evening of my life. Oh, hello, dear. Oh, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I found myself with an evening on my hands, so Leslie took me out to the tavern in for dinner. We had the most divine duck, and we... Hey, hey, where are you going? Please, Mr. Lawrence. I'll be right out, Leslie. He wants me to fix him a bromo seltzer. Well, that's a new approach. I'll tell you what we'll do, Bill. We'll fix two bromos. I'll take mine out to the trailer, and you can take yours back to the Glenville Hotel. Oh, so that's why you... Yes, that's why I... Well, that's the joke of the year. <laughs> why don't you let me in on it? All right, I will. We'll go down to the hotel right now, and I'm going to show you something. And when I do, you'll get down on your hands and knees and apologize to me. Just wait till I get my shoes. Are you sure you brought them home with you, dear? All right, the more you say now, the more you're going to have to apologize for later. Third floor, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, third floor. Who is it? Bill Lawrence. Who? It's me, Bill. Bill! Oh, you came back. Amy? That's the bedroom furniture over there. Uh-huh. It's very pretty. Bed looks good and sturdy. Daddy! Morning, son. Well, what's, what's, what's... It's about the ad in the paper. These people want to buy the bedroom furniture. What are you doing here? Uh, your mother locked me. Uh, never mind. Well, folks, uh, these really very fine type of furniture here. It's it's genuine wood. I'm sure you'd like it. It's very very comfortable. I just slept like a baby. Excuse me. <clears throat> I didn't know this was second hand. I understood everything was brand new, or I certainly wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, I understand you have a baby grand piano for sale. That's right, that's right. Come in. May I see the instrument, please? Yeah, it's right in here. There she is. Nice tone. Do you mind if I try it? No, I hope so.
Chicago on a buying trip today. I just wondered, you know anybody up there that could use some of this jackpot stuff of mine? You know, I still have that diamond ring and a whole lot of wristwatches. And... You do? Who? Flick Morgan. He's a very sharp character, Bill. Kind of a guy to try and beat you down, so ask plenty. Okay. And Harry, let, let me let me put that address down. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, I got it. Thanks a lot, Harry. Bye. It's all right now, you can go ahead. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Oh. Good morning, fellas. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, dear. Who's that, the French maid? No, she wants to buy the washing machine. They hooked it up so she could try it out. That's her fourth load. I'll hang these up to dry, Mrs. Lawrence, while the other batch is washing. Keep an eye on it for me, will you? Yes, ma'am. Phyllis, would you tell your father there was a policeman here this morning? Those fruit trees have to be off the sidewalk by 5 o'clock. Thank you. Phyllis, would you tell your mother that you'll have to get somebody else to move the fruit trees because I'm going to Chicago. Are you two getting a divorce? Mm -hmm. What? Well, we have a right to know, Tommy and me. You have indeed, Phyllis, and you will be among the first to be notified. Don't joke, Father. Children are the real victims of broken homes. I read an article in the Ladies' Home Journal that said, children are the real victims of broken homes, children are. That article sort of repeats itself, doesn't it? It also said that when the parents are always quarreling, this has a serious effect on the children, and later in life it can change their personality. Is that a fact? Yeah. Well, you know, Phyllis, sometimes I think a change of personality might do you good. And now, would you ask your mother if she'd be kind enough to drive me down to the station? I have to catch the 915. Tell your father the answer is no. Good. Tell your mother I'll drive myself to the train, leave the keys with the station master. Bye, Daddy. Bye. Buy a pack of chewing gum. Sure. I understand I can see Flick Morgan here. You do? Who told you? Harry Summers. Oh, Harry. Okay. Right through that door. Thank you. In the stretch, a great moment by three lengths, gallant boy by a head, and Wilma F. Third, the winner. Gallant boy, brief moment is second, and Wilma asks to show. Uh, hey, uh, you tell me where I could find Flick Morgan? Sure, right over there. The guy that's smiling. Thanks a lot. Morgan? Yeah? Say, uh, my name's Lawrence, and uh, Harry Summers told me to look you up. Oh, yeah. How is old Harry boy? He's fine. He said he thought maybe you might be interested in this. Well, that's a nice looking stone. Is it hot? Is it what? I said, is it hot? 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 No, no. I won it on a jackpot program on the radio. Jackpot program? That's right. <laughs> well, that's a new one anyway. How much you want for it? Five thousand. <clears throat> Five thousand dollars. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I'm just going out. Come on, come on, get over there. Okay, everybody, hands on your heads and line up against that wall. 
up. We don't want any trouble from anybody. You're all under arrest, so just take it easy. Hey, now, Captain, I, I wasn't making any bets. No? What were you doing? I was just trying to sell off Diamond Ring. Where is it? Well, he had a Keep your hands thing. on your head. Diamond Ring, eh? Oh, no, those, those watches, they're... Keep they're, quiet. They all belong to me. I want them on a... Holy cow! The guy's a walking jewelry store. I, I want all those on a radio pro. Uh, Harry Summers told me... Take them away. Bring them... I told you, I was minding my own business. I'd just come home from work. We were going to play canasta. And the telephone rang, and I answered it. And it was the federal broadcasting system. And, and I'm going to sue every one of you for false arrest. Listen, every... fella, if you don't cooperate, we'll throw the book at you. Flick Morgan is your fence, isn't he? No. Come on, Bob. Help us hang this on Flick, and we'll go easy on you. Morgan was going to buy the stuff from you. Isn't that right? Yes. No. I don't know. I, I want a lawyer. Where is the diamond ring? What are you protecting Flick Morgan for? Come on, tell the truth. I told you. I'd just come home from work. We were going to play canasta. And the now look, I don't have to answer any of these questions. I'm a citizen. I'm a taxpayer. I, oh, 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 am I ever a taxpayer? All right, all right. Let's not go into that. You say you work for Mr. Andrew J. Woodruff of Glenville, Indiana? I just told you that. You don't believe me. I'll give you a chance to prove it. Here, call him up. Ask operator for long distance. Yeah. Well, I... You couldn't possibly have bought this watch in my store. We don't carry this make. That's just what I told the gentleman, I Mr. Woodruff. I tell you, I did buy it here. And it don't work. I want my 89.50 back. What kind of a clip joint is this, anyhow? I waited on you myself, sir, but you couldn't find it. It was a man sold it to me. A man? What did he look like? Well, How could well, anybody sell him a watch we don't carry? Well, I only thought that well, if... Don't it... think so much. Now... Yes? Mr. Lawrence calling you from Chicago. Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence. Yeah. Just a minute. Uh, take this man downstairs and give him his 89.50. And apologize to him for me. Good day, sir. Uh, yes, Good sir. day to you. All right. Put Mr. Lawrence on. Hello? Mr. Woodruff? It's Bill Lawrence. Look, Mr. Woodruff, I'm kind of mixed up in a little jam here. It's a silly thing, but the police want you to identify me. The captain here, he doesn't believe I work for you. He doesn't, eh? Well, put him on. A.J. Woodruff speaking. Who's this? Oh. No, Captain, I have no William J. Lawrence in my employ. Of course, I'm positive. No one by that name on my payroll. Yes, you can depend on it. <laughs> Not at all, Captain. It's a pleasure. Good morning, Mr. Hush. All right, Buster, rise and shine. Somebody just came in and verified your story. You're all cleared and accounted for. You can go home now. Did you have a comfortable night? The beds are a little soft for me. Yes. Come on, they're waiting for you upstairs. Let's go. Here he is, Captain. Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, Bill. I drove up as soon as I heard. Uh, seems like I owe you a lot these days. Here, Lawrence, would you sign for this? What is it? The stuff you won in the jackpot. You really did want a jackpot, didn't you? Never met a fellow yeah, before. Yeah, well, you've met one now. Nix, 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 nix. Thanks very much, Captain. Come on, Bill. How'd you find out about this? Flick Morgan called me. You mentioned my ring? Oh, why? Has he got your ring? Yeah, you're darn right he's got my ring. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry about it. He's an honest Joe. Well, the people I talked to didn't seem to think so. I had to say Harry James. Why didn't I say Jackie Robinson or Spike Jones, even Aunt Jemima? Oh, you'll get straightened out. Huh? Oh, no. Gee whiz, when I remember how unhappy I used to be in that rot I was in. How I used to complain about it. That nice, comfortable rut. Listen, Bill, you're going back home to make up with Amy, and before you know it, you'll be right back in that rut again, feeling fine. It'll be the same rut. Ah, yes, Bill. So as soon as you get back home, you'll... No, uh, Harry, I, I, I've been through a lot today. How about stopping someplace for a drink, huh? Just one for the road? Well, all right, but just one. Yeah, yeah. There's a place. Looks kind of friendly.
Harry, did I tell you tonight's my anniversary? Yeah, pal, 40 times. Right. That's why you're going home and celebrate with Annie. That's why we bought her the roses. But I can't go home. I've been fired. Did I tell you I'd been fired, Harry? Pete Spooner told me and I told you. That is correct. I've been fired. I had to answer that telephone. Well, now, what are you shaking your heads for? You would have answered it, too. Easy, pal. Take it easy. Easy. Easy, pal. Well, I guess we ought to stop for gas. Buy me a glass. I'll drink it. <laughs> Buy me a glass. I'll drink it. It's long distance. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, this is Mr. Spooner. Oh, hello, Harry. Yeah? Bill? No. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Don't worry, you can count on me. I'll spread the word around. Okay, <laughs> bye. Well, thanks a lot, Harry. Now remember, Bill, be very gay and happy, and don't tell Amy a thing. Right. Trust me. Happy anniversary, Mother. Children, go on upstairs. Go on upstairs, children. Hi, Tommy. Bill, how are the bugs? Good old Bill. Huh. Oh. Amy, these are for you. Hi, Mother. How about a little celebration, huh? Seems to me you've done your celebrating. Overdone. Well, Mother, it's our anniversary. Thank you, lady. How are you? Glad to see you. Uh, how do you do? Uh, I'll let you know tomorrow. Do Good that. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, what was that? That was number eight. There was a string quartet here last night. Too bad you missed it. Well, too bad we can't have them tonight. We could have a celebration. Come on, Mother, let's have a celebration. Bill, where have you been? Shh, secret. Harry told me not to tell you. Oh, so Harry was in a... Well, sure. Well, if it hadn't been for Harry, I would... Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you're not going to trick me. You're not... Well, if it isn't the old five-way wire recorder, air conditioner, incubator, bar. Hey, this is pretty good. Come on, Mother, now let's have a libation. You name it, and I'll dish it out. I don't want anything, Father. You don't want anything, Father? What do you... You want me to drink alone? Happy anniversary. Well, Leslie, come on in. I need a drinking partner. Oh, sorry, old boy, my stomach. The duck. Congratulations, however. Ah, well, this is a fine party. I got a couple of... Toe teetlers on my hand. Rather an inauspicious moment, wouldn't you say? Very. I doubt if you could even see it, but... Well, we might as well go ahead and get it over with. Get what over with? What are you two jabbering about? Mr. Lawrence, we have a nice little surprise for you. Fine. I love surprises. Well, if you would just stand over here for a moment. Just about there will do. <laughs> now then. Uh, are we ready? Fire! <laughs> Rather chic, don't you think? I think I'd better sit down. Bill! Yes, oh. What happened? Oh, Bill. What's that thing? That thing, Mr. Lawrence, is your chair. It needed to be cut down, so I cut it down. You cut it down? You cut my favorite chair? For what? What am I, a midget? Now, don't get excited, Mr. Lawrence. It was completely wrong. It threw the whole room off balance. Threw it off balance? Huh? Why, you... Bill! Really? What? What did I do? You let him ruin my favorite chair and he changes the den into a funeral parlor and throws the whole house turpsy toby and then you stick up for him. Yes, I stick up for him because you're wrong. You stay out all night, goodness knows where, come home drunk, insult Leslie. You ought to apologize to him. Me? Apologize to yes, him? Yes. I ought to throw him off balance. That's no, what no, I... No, no, I wouldn't have lied in your case. Now, all together... Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Delaney. Happy
Oh, you're awake. Oh, good. What time is it? Twelve o'clock. I feel. Yeah, I know what you mean. Here. Well, it's all over, Harry. What is? Everything. My job, Amy. And that singing, whose idea was that? Well, Bill, I thought it might yeah. help. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, just do me a favor, huh? Harry. Just just don't help me anymore. No, I see what you mean, Bill. Well, you'll feel better when you get cleaned up. Got a razor in there? I don't know. I'll see you. Yeah. Fine job of packing, hmm? Yeah. Wait for me, please. Hello. Is your father at home? No, ma'am. Your mother? She is. Oh. Is that for us? Yes, it is. I don't think we're taking anything anymore. Oh? Hello, Mrs. Lawrence. My husband isn't here. May I come in, please? Certainly. Thank you. Tommy, you run along and play there. I have the portrait here. Oh, so there is a portrait. Yes, and I hope that you will like it. I don't think it matters very much whether I like it or not. Oh, I think when you see it, you will change your mind. And you will find that it does matter. It's of me. Yes. Bill wanted to surprise you. He wanted to give it to you himself. But when I went to the Woodruff store to find him, they told me he does not work there any longer. Yes, that's true. Will Bill be home soon? I wouldn't know. I doubt it. Oh, so it is like that, is it? Yes, I'm afraid it is. But thank you so much for the portrait. It's really very nice. I'm glad you like it. It is not difficult to paint such a beautiful face. Thank you. Won't you? No, I have to go. My train, it leaves in half an hour, and my taxi is waiting. You don't know where Bill is? No, Mrs. Lawrence. You were wrong about Bill. I was a little wrong myself. Were you? Yes. He is very much in love with you. I would think carefully before you let him go. To be truthful, if I thought you were going to be so foolish, I might not catch that train at all. Goodbye, Miss Jones. And thank you again. Not at all. Mrs. Lawrence. Yes, Leslie. You'll be very sorry to hear that I'm leaving. For my work, I require an atmosphere of rhythm and harmony. What happened last night has completely shattered me. But Hilda, darling, you're here. That's your taxi? Good, you may drive me to the station. Goodbye, my dear. You have my deepest sympathy. Goodbye. How do you do? Yes. Pritchett is my name of the law firm of Hammerhill, Pritchett and Schofield. I've come to see Mr. Lawrence. He isn't here. Yes, I know. I talked with Mr. Summers at the newspaper office. Mr. Lawrence is on his way home. May I wait? Of course. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Right in there. Excuse me, I'll get this out of your way. It's perfectly all right. Why does he want to see Daddy? Are you and Daddy really going to Children, get... go on upstairs. But I want to find out if Phil has no questions. Just do as I say. Run on. Run on, Tommy. Which one will you choose, Mother or Dad? I'm not going to choose anybody. I'm going to stay right here. I like it here. What's the matter with everybody? Oh, I don't know, Tommy. <laughs> Oh, Amy, mind if I come in? Most of the stuff I packed was Tommy's. I wanted to get my own. Go right ahead. Mr. Pritchett, the lawyer, is waiting. All right, Amy. Mr. Pritchett? How do you do, Mr. Lawrence? I think we'd better close these doors. <laughs> You'll excuse us? I represent the firm of Hammerhill, Pritchett and Schofield, attorneys at law. Well, whatever my wife told you is true, Mr. Pritchett, and I'm not going to contest anything. I just hope you're not used to big fees, because this is one time you... Please, Mr. Lawrence. All right, just say what you've got to say. Get it over with, huh? 
Don't expect me to be calm about it. Mr. Lawrence, I don't know what domestic difficulties you're having, nor can I be of any assistance to you. That is not a branch of the law with which I am familiar, nor have I any inclination in that direction. I'm here solely in behalf of my client, Mr. Franklin Laswell Morgan. Mr. Who? Franklin Laswell Morgan. Flick. Flick Morgan? Precisely. My client. Well, what's that cheap crook done with my diamond ring? Well, unfortunately, in Mr. Morgan's hasty departure the other day, the ring, which was not a perfect fit, slipped off his finger. In short, it was lost. In short, that's great. However, Mr. Morgan is not only an honorable man, but also a grateful man. And he feels that in view of your praiseworthy behavior in his behalf... Me? Oh, don't be modest. Mr. Morgan is quite aware of your refusal to implicate him. We have certain friends who have told us the whole story. And Mr. Morgan wants you to know that even though the ring has been lost, the loss is his own. In short, Mr. Lawrence, you have made a sale. <laughs> You don't mind being paid in cash? In cash? Oh, it's quite cool. You need have no worry about spending this money. <laughs> see here. Oh. Hello, Amy. I understand Bill's back. Yes? I'd like to talk to him. Come in. He's busy, but you can wait in the dining room. Thank you. Good day, Mrs. Lawrence. I think you'd better take a look at your husband. He appears to be in a state of acute shock. Good day. Good day, Mr. Pritchett. Hey, Amy. Look. Look at $5,000. Where'd you get it? I, 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 I flicked Morgan, a Chicago racketeer. Oh, what for? I don't know. I think I kept the code. The code? Honey, do you realize what this means? We can use this to take care of the taxes. We can get back on our feet again. We're out of the woods, honey. And all the time I thought that fellow was your lawyer. And I thought he was your lawyer. You thought he was my lawyer, I thought he was... Oh, Amy. <laughs> oh, well, what do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, now, look, Bill, what I told the police was just a joke. A joke, huh? That's your idea of a joke. Well, this is mine. Oh, oh Bill! Oh, good heavens. I better get the smelling salt. The phone, Bill, the phone! Look, Bill, I want to tip you off. You can hold Woodruff up for a raise. He's on his way over to your place. Yeah, you've got the job, vice president. Freddie, <laughs> he lasted one day. Mr. Woodruff. Mr. Woodruff! Here, Mr. Woodruff. Here, Mr. Woodruff. Come on, up you come. Here, Millie. Millie, come on. Oh. oh, oh, Bill, Bill, what in the world happened to you, honey? Oh, Bill, Bill, wake up, baby. Here, smell it, smell it. That's way. That's that's way. Amy, Amy, Bill, how'd you make out? Pack the trunks, honey. We got three weeks vacation. No, how on earth did you manage that? I just that? put my foot down. I said, AJ, I've got to have two weeks vacation or. Or what? It never got that far. He said, Bill, he calls me Bill now. He said, Bill, take three. Oh, now we can go on that trip to New York. No, no, no. We're going someplace where there's no telephone, no radio, no modern conveniences, except, of course, for a few of the old fashioned ones. Oh. Oh. Well, what's that? I don't know. Hello. Yes, this is William Lawrence. This is the federal broadcasting system, Mr. Lawrence. Will you be home tonight between 9 and 10 o'clock to listen to... What? What'd he say? Next time you get any bright ideas like that, you make your own telephone call. <laughs> and you too. And furthermore, you can... Bill, really? Honey. <laughs> I told you everything would be all right. There's nothing sure. The rich get rich and the poor get children.